Hello to all you beautiful bastards out there, Regnella over here bringing you another episode of Monster Hunter for New Night. We are back on to epic hunting quests this go around, so for today's epic hunting quest, we are doing the Emerald Kongalala, the Purple Gypsaros, and the Kizu, so Predators of the Swamp. Uh, don't underestimate this one, this one can be pretty freaking hard, especially since it is in G rank. And in fact, we are starting with arguably the hardest monster of the three, which is the Emerald Kongalala. So your strategy is to attack from a distance, mostly. It's, um, it's not a monster that you want to be up close and personal with when it comes to fighting. Because uh, especially if when the Emerald Kongalala goes into rage mode, most, if not all, of his attacks are accompanied by farting. So yes, we are going back to lowbrow humor over here. It's uh, not my fault, it's Capcom's fault for designing such a goofy freaking monster. But apparently there are some differences between the Emerald Kongalala as well as, well, a, a regular Kongalala. And I have the wiki page open so we can get into them. So in addition to the obvious change, to which is green and white coloration, it has a large beard and a taller hair spike than normal Kongalala. It uh, also creates a, uh, a greater amount of gas, which, you know, that should be pretty freaking obvious. Um, and like a normal Kongalala, if it eats a mushroom in its tail, it can unleash a breath attack, though I think that might be a G rank thing only. And depending on the item consumed, it could either put you to sleep, it could give you the soiled status, it can poison you, it can paralyze you, and in the fourth generation, it can give you fire blight as well as blast blight. The blast blight is probably the scariest, but then again, I'm having flashbacks to uh, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, where blast elements were probably the most broken element there was. And let's see, the Emerald Kongalala are very curious of its surroundings, but they are also more aggressive and less social than normal Kongalala. So in other words, you know, this guy is the super basement dweller, or eh, based on that beard, maybe he's just a neck beard. I don't know. Okay, going into the notes of this guy, um, melee attacks are the same as normal Kongalala's, though it has different elemental weaknesses. So this guy is, oddly enough, weaker to ice. And as you can see, as I'm fighting him, I'm trying to stay kind of to his side. I'm avoiding that ass like it has herpes. It's it, it's really bad, and I'm only taking a swing when I know I can get away with it. So he could unleash a devastating fart blast at any time. And so whenever he goes down like that, I avoid... I aim for the head, I avoid every other part of his body, except for maybe the arms too. But um, that attack that he just did where he just rockets his stomach, or he pats his stomach and then he rockets out this massive fart blast. That is hard to dodge and it does quite a bit of damage. When I was first in G rank, this guy was practically a bane of my existence. So when he goes into rage mode, I'm trying to make sure that he gets flash bombed as much as possible. That way he holds relatively still and I can take a few more shots at him. He's less likely to go ahead and fart when he is stunned. So that, you know, flash bombs your best friend against this guy. And as for the three monsters in general, the flash bombs as well as the shock traps are probably only gonna be suited for this guy. The other two are either immune to one or the other one won't work. Or I think in the Gypsum's case, he's immune to both. So he um, he's oddly enough, he's just uh, the Gypsum's is uh, this guy is a pain, but he wasn't as bad as the Kizu because the Kizu took me forever to locate once he started leaving. So I'm taking an opportunity to set up a shock trap as this guy is sleeping. And then the plan is, once that shock trap fails, I know that he's going to go into rage mode, and that's when I throw a flash bomb. I take that moment where he is about to go and, uh, and ruin my day, and I turn it against him. 
So there we go, flash bomb, and just one more shot kills him. Just bear in mind that like the uh, Blaganga, the and its other normal Kongalala counterpart, it will try to take a swipe at you at the very end as a last ditch effort to take some health off you. And now we have the purple Gypsaros, or as I like to call it, the purple rubber chicken. You know, because you never, you never know when you need a rubber chicken, but it doesn't make this guy any less annoying. And there's uh, just very few differences between this guy and its uh, regular counterpart. Um, the most obvious is the coloration, and that goes back into my bitching about subspecies and all that. But I have, uh, I have a hundred episodes of this series to do because someone, and again, you know who you are, uh, you, you, you threw down the gauntlet. And so my goal is to do a hundred of these episodes, even if I have to do these goddamn subspecies. And speaking of which, if, um, if and when I do finish this series, what Monster Hunter series do you guys want me to do next? I mean, odds are I'm going to keep doing them. Um, the only exception of the Monster Hunters that I will do is um, probably the first one for the PS2 or Freedom 2 or the just Freedom in general. Because I know I have a low opinion of myself. I just don't hate myself that much to put, put myself through the agony that is first generation Monster Hunter and the first game in the second generation because Freedom 2 was pretty brutal in its of its own right and that was primarily because you had no feline comrade with you. You'd be surprised on having a partner is how much of a game changer that really is. You know that's um, feline partners are awesome they, and they're freaking adorable. But uh, I was thinking that about maybe doing I don't know, um, for Ultimate. I mean, that is a pretty good game, and the only thing I'll need is uh, an emulator. Um, but, uh, well, Purple Gypsaros is down. Uh, keep some antidotes on you, because his poison in G rank is a, is a bit more potent than it is normally, so he can, uh, he can just sap a lot of your health away. And you might be thinking that this, uh, this game's going quite a bit faster than normal, and you are right. The first couple of monsters, I just sped it up by about eh, 15%, but for the Kizu specifically, I wanted to do a 20 or 25% just because this guy gave me a lot of grief. This is a monster that I wanted to take my time with, mostly because it, it, like the Emerald Kongalala, it's not advisable to hit it up close unless you have the opportunity to because that electric field that he can use it's so irritating so I'm just really trying to make sure my strikes are specific they are um, opportunistic and it just made this quest go by very slowly and unfortunately the Kizu decided he want to go to a different area so I spent probably about six or seven minutes just trying to find this guy because uh, I didn't have enough items in my inventory to have paintballs, which, you know, that's not a good thing. I was thinking that I was going to need the majority of my materials for the Emerald Kongalala, and it would be all fine from there. But no, apparently not. And so at one point I was at base camp trying to get a hold of um, either paintballs or the Psycho Serum that the quest will give you once supplies come in. And I didn't end up using them because I found the Kizu right after that, which that was that was annoying. But let's go into some armor. So I'm just, you know, I'm going by these monsters pretty quickly. So I will try to get through these uh, armor sets as quickly as possible. We're going through the G rank Blade Master armor, starting with the Emerald Kongalala, the Konga Z armor. You're going to have an initial defense of 410, a max defense of 550. Fire Resistance 10, Water Resistance 5, Ice Resistance negative 15, Thunder Resistance 5, and Dragon Resistance 0. Your skills include Quick Eating, Reckless Abandon plus 1, and the Blunt skill. So that's not good if you're trying to maintain your weapon sharpness. Thankfully, there are 11 slots to mess around with. So you could either uh, add a skill 
um, delete the, uh, the blunt negative effect, or maybe even do both. As for the G rank Gypsaros armor, we're looking at the Gypsaros Z armor set. Your initial defense is also going to be 410, max defense 550. Your fire resistance is going to be negative 20, your water resistance is going to be 5, your ice resistance is going to be 5, thunder resistance is going to be 20, and dragon resistance is going to be 0. Bear in mind, the rubber chicken is a rubber chicken for a reason. That rubbery hide is very resistant to anything electric. So that includes shock traps. Shock traps will not work on a rubber chicken. Just remember that. Your skills include Faint Negated, Runner, and Hunger Increase Low. You'll have 12 armor slots so you can get rid of it through that. And let's see, lastly we have the G Rank Kizu. And let's see, this is a regular Kizu, so you're looking at the Kizu X armor set. Your initial defense is going to be 410. Your max, uh, your max defense is going to be 500, fire resistance negative 15, water resistance 15, ice resistance 0, thunder resistance 20, and dragon resistance 0. And let's see, you're going to have uh, four skills, paralysis negated, health recovery items improved, which is really weird to say off the skills lifts because it's all one word and part of it is shortened. Uh, let's see, damage recovery speed plus one, and faint duration doubled. You only have nine armor slots to choose from when it comes to uh, getting the faint duration uh, down a bit, so you know, be very careful with what you choose. You want to make all your uh, choices and skills count with this armor set, even if you want to go ahead and uh, get this armor set to begin with, because frankly, it doesn't sound very good. I mean, maybe it could be useful against the um, uh, the, the Rajang, but I don't know how useful. But the Kizu is almost dead. Just from uh, as a reminder, if you are um, just new to this channel, when the Kizu freeze, uh, just freezes up for no reason, then the, uh, the monster is ready to die. But that's going to do it for me and this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in any of my other content, be sure to click on one of those annotations that will be featured on the end of this video. Or if you want to support the channel, subscribing is always appreciated. But until next time, take care, people.